Have you ever wanted to know how to easily receive divine healing? If so, stay tuned, watch this video because this is the first in a series that I've created on how to receive divine healing and how to receive it easily. Also, you're going to want to make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that you can know when the next video comes out next week and the videos after that because there's going to be eight or so in this series and this is going to help equip you to easily receive divine healing so that the issues and the things that you face can easily be dealt with and uh, push to the side. So stay tuned and watch this video because that's coming up right now. Hey everyone, my name is Adam Somerville, inspiring and teaching you to walk like Jesus in everyday life. And in this channel, I focus on equipping and growing believers up in miracles, healings, signs, and wonders. So if that interests you, consider subscribing. Also, along with that, I like to answer people's questions on healing. So if you have any questions throughout this video that come up regarding healing or miracles or anything like that, make sure to leave that in the comments so I can answer that because a lot of those comments become my next video. So this is the first in a series on how to receive receive healing or how to make receiving divine healing easy. And I think this is so important because there's a lot of people out there who kind of view healing and that area as a big old mystery. They don't know how to receive healing. They don't know how it works. They don't know the promises on healing or what the Bible really says on it. And so when they go and approach God, they're kind of like uh, trying to, I don't know, navigate through a highway traffic with a blindfold on hoping it might have works. And if you don't really understand it, it doesn't work all too well. Just saying, it just is how it works. It's the same with salvation. If you have no idea how to uh, believe in Jesus, uh, about Jesus, about the message of the gospel, uh, it's really hard to be saved. You need to hear the message of the gospel to be saved. And this, in the same way, you need to hear the message on healing that the Bible presents in order to receive healing. So this video is kind of an overview on uh, three points, and I'm just gonna give you three truths that'll help set you up to receive divine healing. And then the rest of the videos that are gonna come up on this series are gonna go really in depth and in detail about God who's our healer and how to receive it and verses on it. And I'm super excited about this series because uh, I, there's very few out there that I know of that really set people up to actually take step-by-step -step ways in order to grow themselves so that healing can be received very easily. So if you watch through these uh, series and you hit that bell and you subscribe to the channel, you're going to be equipped and to receive healing easily and to have that be a part of your life and not a challenge and not an uphill battle. So by the end of this, it's gonna be a slippery slope, not an uphill battle. So here are three truths that you need to start. That's kind of the foundation and the basis for this. And I'm just gonna walk you through these briefly. So the first truth is you need to begin to approach God as your healer. You actually have to believe that he is declaring to you from scripture and from his word that he is your healer. You know, in Exodus, uh, he says to the Israelites, I am Jehovah Rapha, a God who heals you. And Jehovah Rapha means exactly that, a God who heals you. So he's actually in there declaring to the Israelites, I am the God who heals your sickness and your diseases. This is what he's saying to them. And then let's just go through a couple scriptures here briefly. I'll do more details on these scriptures in uh, later videos, but I'm just going to show you a couple. So let's just go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. You're going to want to turn there in your Bibles with me. So Psalm 91 is an absolutely incredible, powerful uh, scripture. It's amazing. And so we're just, I'm just going to read a couple verses from this and then we'll go to Psalm 103 next. So let's just read Psalm 91 verse uh, 1 and 2. And it says this, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let's just read verse 3 as well. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. This is Psalm 91. This is what David's declaring. He's uh, And Psalms were set up in kind of poetry and song form to help people remember the truths that were in them. That's something, it's poetry set up to help people remember truths about who God is so that the next generation can memorize these songs and hear these Psalms and actually believe God and follow him and keep going. It was also like an expression of the heart of people. So this is powerful. He's saying that uh, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from deadly pestilence. It's saying he is your refuge and your fortress and God in whom you trust. He's saying, I will say these things. I will declare these things. Well, are we declaring them? Are we believing them? Are we saying them? So let's just uh, hop to the end here. Um, for, verse 14, 15, and 16. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. This is God declaring this to us, by the way. 
Uh, I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Like this is the word of God. This is God declaring these things to us, talking about us. If we hold fast to him in love, he will do these things for our lives. And we need to set ourselves up to actually begin to believe that, hey, God is my healer. Now let's just go to Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So the point of this song is to set people up who are reading it and memorizing it to not forget the benefits of the Lord. This is, that's a big point here. So get this. Now read the next verse. Who forgives all our iniquity. Iniquity just means sins. So he's forgiven all our sins, all the wrong that we've done. We already know that in salvation, but the next verse is he. Here's what it says. Who heals all your diseases. This is, this is King David writing this and saying, God is the one who heals all my diseases. And actually even uh, kings in the Old Testament were expected to go to the prophet and AKA go to the Lord to uh, receive healing, to be healed. And they were expected to inquire of the Lord regarding sickness and disease and to get healing that way. And so he's saying, this is the God who heals all my diseases disease. How powerful, how amazing, how incredible. So we need to go to the Lord and actually believe scripture and say, God is the one who heals me. And you're going to want to come in uh, next week as well, because next week I'm going to be talking in detail and uh, doing an in-depth study on Jehovah Rapha. So we can really begin to believe that God is the healer of our disease. The second point that you're going to want to understand, the second truth is that Jesus paid for our healing. And this mainly comes from Isaiah 53 and Matthew chapter 8. Now again, this will be another video that I do an in-depth study on this, but we're just doing an overview today. So let's go to Isaiah 53. Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Griefs and sorrows, by the way, in the language actually means sickness and disease. And we're going to see that in Matthew chapter 8. Uh, he was, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. And upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. So again, by the stripes of Jesus, the stripes of Jesus, his beating, his bruising, his his the blood shed on that whipping post and on the cross is actually part of that is for our healing. For our salvation too, and we see that in 1 Peter, uh, but for our healing, by his stripes we are healed. And as we see in the verse above, in verse four, healing is part of the atonement. And that's physical healing, not, not a, just spiritual healing, but physical healing. A restoration of the whole person is the point of the cross. And so if we go to Matthew chapter 8, let's just turn there right now. Uh, we're starting at verse 14 to 17. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and began to serve him. So that's pretty amazing. He didn't even pray for her. He just touched her and the fever left. Why? Because life is inside Christ. And when Jesus made contact with Peter's mother-in-law, life flowed through and delivered her of that sickness. And that evening, they brought him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out spirit, the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. And this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. So that's exactly, that's verse 4 in Isaiah 53, verse 4. And he says, he took our illnesses. This is how, um, this is how Matthew would have interpreted Isaiah 53. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Amazing. So we need to believe that when Jesus died on the cross, he actually, he took those diseases, he took those illnesses upon himself so that we could be healed. So we're not coming to God trying to get him maybe to heal us. No, he already paid for it. He already made a way for it. And so we're stepping in the expectation that we can receive the way that he paid for. And my final point, actually, uh, the final truth is that the way that he paid for it is received by faith. So let's go to Mark chapter 11. And again, this will be one that I do a huge study on, an in-depth video on this, but we're just doing an overview today. And so it says this in Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answered them, by the way, this is after he had cursed the fig tree and withered and died. And the disciples see that and now they're inquiring, okay, how did you do this? And here's what he says, have faith in God. So that's what I just set you up for having faith in God. Those two points set you up faith in God. And he says, it's truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so Jesus just showed us that 
Uh, the way to receive answers to prayer, the way to receive uh, healing, whatever it is, is to ask, believing that the moment you've asked, you've received it. And that's, that's what that means. It's actually, uh, it is a present tense action. Uh, there's a commanding in there, but it's a present tense action of taking. The word is more so to take. So believe that when you ask, uh, that you have right in that moment taken a hold of what you've asked for. So when you pray, you take it a hold of healing. It's now yours. It's not yours later. It's now yours. Then once you believe that you have taken a hold of it right now, then it will be yours in the future. That's you will receive it later on in the future. That's sort of how healing works. So healing, what Jesus paid for and the God who heals you, all of that is received in the action of faith of believing, yes, this is mine. I've taken a hold of this. I've taken a hold of the healing Jesus paid for. I've, I've uh, opened myself up to the God who heals me. And then now that will be, will be mine. And so we just need to set ourselves up in that place of faith to believe God is our healer. And that's essentially what this video series coming up is going to do. This is going to uh, rewire your mind, rewire your brain, because the truth is that uh, basically faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. And the idea is it sets our mind up and our belief systems to actually begin to believe the word of God because we have to renew our mind to be transformed. That's what Romans chapter 12 says. Do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that word transformation is become a whole different person. I've become a whole different being. Everything changes. And so uh, to, in order to receive healing and have faith, we have to change the way we think to actually believe the word of God. So that's what this video series is going to set you up for. By the end of this, as we go through this, and I don't really know how long God is going to uh, keep me going on this video series. I know at least we have eight weeks of this. So at the end of this eight weeks uh, of one video a week, you're going to be set up more so than ever to actually begin to believe God for healing and to receive healing. So right now, this week, take these three points that I've shared with you, rewatch this video, go over them. Don't just let them sit there. Go over them. Go over the scriptures I shared. Uh, look at it in detail. Pray this out over yourself and, uh, and start pressing into God as your healer, understanding that he paid for your healing and that healing is received in the simple place of faith. Faith isn't complicated. It's very simple. And so I'm just going to pray for you right now. God, I just thank you for every person watching this. I speak life over their bodies in Jesus' name. And I say from head to toe, be healed now. Sickness, disease, get out now. Be healed. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. So again, I'm Adam Somerville. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell and leave a comment because we want to engage in the community as we grow together to see signs and wonders and miracles flow in our life and through our life. So God bless you. And I'll see you here next week.